question is give a brief account of herbaria so students actually what is herbaria so it involves the collection of drying pressing mounting stitching labeling and deposition of plants so what is this te technique so this technique actually uh, involves the pressing and drying of the plant so other than this it also fulfills the demand of uh, supplying plant material for the various scientific studies so now actually herbaria can be of three types regional herbaria local herbaria and educational institutions so if i talk about regional herbaria it includes the plants which are uh, geographically similar maybe it can also includes to neighboring countries whereas local flora includes state uh, the plants of uh, state district or other nature reserves now if i include educational institutions so it includes school colleges and universities so now what is uh, we can also write about the significance of herbaria so actually it, it 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 is important for the preservation of national wealth of the plant other than this it also involves various research programs it also helps in the exchange and loan of preserved plants for the various scientific studies now the next question is give an outline classification of kingdom planting with one example each so if i talk about the classification of kingdom planting so basically plants are divided into uh, four groups they are the these are the algae bryophytes pteridophytes and spermatophyta so algae may in algae we can take the example of chlamydomonas wallbox culothrix spirogyra in bryophytes we can take the example of rhesia marchensia and in pteridophytes you can take the example of nephrolepis um, uh, selaginella so these are the few examples of pteridophytes whereas spermato if i talk about spermatophytes so, so these are again divided into gymnosperms and angiosperms so examples of uh, gymnosperms can be cycas pinus etc other than if i come to angiosperms so angiosperms are again divided on the basis of their cotyledons so they are the monocotyledons and dicotyledons so monocotyledons will include the plants like zemes wheat whereas dicotyledon will include sunflower hibiscus rosa sinensis so these are the few uh, examples of kingdom planty and how uh, kingdom planty is classified now the next question is distinguish between dicotyledon and monocotyledon so as what we have seen, seen here angiosperms are again divided into uh, the basis of their cotyledons that is dicotyledon and monocotyledon so what are these cotyledons means the leaves which are present inside the embryo so if i start with the dicotyledon so here two cotyledon will be present in the seed whereas if you go to monocotyledon here only single cotyledon will be present inside the embryo now if you talk about root system so in dicot plants the root system will be tap root whereas in monocotyledon plant the root system will be adventitious root now again if you come to uh, dicotyledon plant so stem will be branched so what you can see the many example like bamboo tree uh, with various shrubs herbs they have a number of branches whereas if you come to monocotyledon here branches are absent they are unbranched plants now if we talk about leaves so here in dicot leaves will be reticulated like something like this it will be something so the, the here the venation reticulate here you can see the neck like structure that is a reticulate venation and in monocotyledons the venation will be parallel it will be something like this other than this here if i talk about dicotyledon so vascular bundle uh, will be conjoint collateral and open means here uh, there will be a cambium present between the xylem and phloem whereas in um, vascular bundles of uh, monocotyledon it will be uh, conjoint collateral and closed so 
uh, in dicotyledon as cambium is present between the uh, vascular xylem and phloem so we can see the secondary growth in dicotyledon uh, plants whereas in monocotyledons sec secondary growth will be absent now the vascular bundles will be rings will be present in uh, dicotyledon means here the vascular bundles will be arranged in rings whereas in monocotyledon plants vascular bundles will be scattered so if you take the example of dicotyledon so all the flowering plants like a discus rosa sinensis um, sunflower mustard pea all will come in the category of dicotyledon plants whereas in monocotyledon we can take the example of zinnias wheat so all the flowers which have a this kind of leaves like one leaf present at each node will come in the category of monocots so this is about how we can distinguish between dicotyledon plant and monocotyledon plants now the next question is distinguish between bryophytes and pteridophytes so students if i talk about bryophytes so plant body is not well differentiated means here mostly the plants are thallus like structures but if you see in pteridophytes here the plant body will be well differentiated into root stem and leaves now if you come to bryophytes vascular tissues will be absent but if you come to pteridophytes these are the only plants where first time vascular tissues were present means this is the evolution of vascular tissues in pteridophytes now if you come to uh, bryophytes gametophyte is dominant phase but in the life cycle of uh, pteridophytes the sporophyte phase will be dominant now if you come to bryophytes tuber and gemma are uh, present so these are the vegetative structures which can if come uh, out come in the contact with water and they uh, come out from the body they can if they get the favorable condition they can give rise to a new plant but no such kind of structure is present in the pteridophytes whereas if i talk about like we all know that alternation of generation occurs in all the plants life cycle so if you see the life cycle of bryophytes so sporophyte will be semi parasite or totally parasite on the gametophyte but in the pteridophytes both the generations are independent means uh, sometimes it will be in the form of prothallus structure gametophyte and after some time uh, the it will be changes from the new sporophyte plant now sporophyll is uh, not leafy like in the bryophytes where as in this uh, pteridophytes sporophyll will be leafy so these are the few differences between the bryophytes and pteridophytes with two examples so students as earlier we have discussed about algae so firstly we should know uh, we can write about their habitat like uh, what kind of habitat they show so mostly if i talk about algae they are aquatic sometimes there are many algae which are marine some lives in fresh water some grown in marine water whether as some are terrestrial also but mostly they are aquatic and most of them are free living but there are some algae which shows symbiotic relationship also other than this you can also write down about the structure of algae sometimes like if you see there are many we have also discussed it that there are many algae which are microscopic as chlorella some are multicellular branch and filamentous as a spirogyra whereas some are filamentous but some of them are very huge so these are the here few characters to which you can write about the structure of algae now if you see the cell wall so as earlier we have discussed that they are they have double layered wall so one now students a uh, very short answer questions now what are the cryptogams so if i talk about cryptogams so actually there are many uh, plants of kingdom plantae are come in the category of cryptogams like algae bryophytes and pteridophytes so what are these uh, why are they different from uh, phanerogams because they are the spore producing plants so cryptogams are the plants which will produce the spores they do not uh, produce any kind of seeds other than this if you talk about uh, their reproductive system so it is hidden somewhere inside the 
a leaf so means you cannot see the uh, reproductive system so here like if you see the like, uh, meaning of cryptos cryptos means conceal means the reproductive organ will be concealed in the cryptogams and they are spore producing plants and they do not produce any kind of seeds now the next question name the accessory pigments of algae so as we know that uh, how algae are divided into different uh, classes according to their pigments and their stored food material so what are the these uh, pigments so if i talk about necessary pigment that will be a chlorophyll a but there are many accessory pigments are also present in algae these are these will be the chlorophyll a sorry chlorophyll b chlorophyll c chlorophyll d carogen xantho uh, carogen xantho xanthophyll other than this phycocyanin and phycoerythrin so these are the few accessory pigments of algae now give any two examples of bryophytes so students bryophytes are the plants which are called the amphibious plants so if you see the example as we can take the example of liverworts like rixia marchensia whereas moss in mosses we can take the example of funaria now the next question who first used the term gymnosperm so actually the gymnosperm was a word which was first coined by the theophrastus in 300 bc in his book inquiry of plants choose the right kindergarten a right bag and matching bottle to go with the right school the right friends choose the right subjects and score well be an expert in all the right teacher and make sure that they like you choose the right timing right bus and take a cab if getting late the right train and don't stand near the gates mind the pockets better get into ladies compartment and make sure your mustache has been started coming choose the right study time and forget games ipl iha rock and metal guitar x the right group and be a model to your brother seriously choose the right syllabus the right test paper keep guessing questions for exams choose the right branch the right college the right stream choose the right career lucky to have a father's business to take care of and a father to allow that the right counselor the right form and make sure the project is submitted on time choose the right website and rely on your friends for more information oblivious of the sites they have been to There is no end to your woes. Getting better with every step you climb up the ladder. The summer vacations shorter, the bucket list bigger, the night darker, the books heavier. The only light you have is your friends ahead of you. To Babley, he is right. Ever thought how he got the direction? No more spending your energy and money on coaching classes. No more missing classes for rain, rally, and nonsense. Get your interest back in subjects through our creative ways of teaching. Doubts, concepts, applications, all explained through one vibrant animation. Subjects covered by multiple teachers with repeat telecasts. Special programs only for basic foundation and paper analysis. Personality development, career counseling. admissions hobbies all covered a new approach to study with long term perspective so sit back comfortably in your homes and watch study spectrum tv channel So there are many plants like uh, pteridophytes, few pteridophytes, gymnosperms, and angiosperms are the sub sub group which uh, produce the spores which are heterosporous. Means spores will be of will will be differ in the size. 
Now the next question is what do you mean by indirect pollination? So what is the meaning of indirect pollination? When pollen like uh, if you see the uh, angiosperm so what happens there the pollen can grain has to reach to the reproductive part of uh, uh, female reproductive part so here the pollen grains how they will reach to the female reproductive part firstly they have to reach to the stigma that is the part of the female reproductive part it includes stigma style and ovary so the topmost part of carpel that is the stigma will receive the pollen grain then it will reach to the ovary through pollen tube so this kind of uh, pollination is called the indirect pollination now the next question is define the term siphonogamy so what is siphonogamy so here uh, like siphon what happens here the fertilization is by means of pollen tube means here for fertilization will occur through a pollen tube and mostly seed plants like gymnosperms and angiosperms will come in the category of siphonogamy now the next question is to which group does jingo belong so what is this jingo this is a living fossil tree which come in the group of a uh, gymnosperms so students these are these are the questions of kingdom plant plant planty which now we are done with all the question and answers now the smallest gymnosperm among the following so options are bolifia zemia pygmaea sequoia semi per uh, semi per virens taxodium uh, mucronatum so the answer will be zemia pygmaea zemia pygmaea this is the smallest gymnosperm on earth now the next question is the smallest gymnosperm among the following so options are wolfia zemia pygmaea sequoia semper uh, virens and taxodium macronatum so the answer will be zemia pygmaea it is the second option option zemia zemia pygmaea this will be the uh, answer of the smallest gymnosperm among the following now the next question is parallel venation is a characteristic feature of so the options are monocotyledons dicotyledons pteridophytes and bryophytes so students uh, the parallel venation is actually the characteristics of monocotyledons mono this is the first option that is the right answer now the xylem of pteridophytes contains only so the option are vessels tracheids xylem parenchyma and xylem sclerenchyma so the answer will be xylem tracheids so the answer will be the xylem tracheids this is the second option so students earlier we have discussed about the characteristics of gymnosperm and how again gymnosperms are divided into different classes like monocot and dicot now we are going to start with the reproduction is angiosperms so angiosperms means they are flowering plants so before knowing what is the sexual reproduction or what is the life cycle of angiosperms it is very important to know what is the uh, structure of a flower why we should know the structure of a flower because flower is a reproductive part of the angiosperm so firstly we should actually clear about what is the structure of a flower so if you see here i have taken the long longitudinal section of a flower so usually flower has four roots these are calyx like uh, sepals corolla petals uh, stamen and a uh, uh, ovary uh, sorry xylem sclerenchyma option now 
but this is about the character. sexual reproduction or because flower is a deep island Corolla.